Okay, so last time uh, I asked you to use the even and odd identities to help us evaluate all six trig functions at minus five pi over six. So if we start in this, looking at this first column, we're using theta equals negative five pi over six. When we moved over, we used the even and odd identities. Now our theta is positive five pi over six, which would be arguably an easier, an easier um, angle to work with. Uh, also make note here that since the cosine and the secant are the only even functions of the six trig functions. They're the only ones that come out without their chain, their sign being changed. Uh, here we notice that the sign, the cosecant, the tangent, and the cotangent all being odd functions. Uh, the angle becomes positive, but the value becomes negative outside of the trig function. So at this point, all we have to do is over here we come up with whatever means we we prefer to to evaluate those six trig functions at theta equals positive five pi over six. You could use the unit circle, or if you uh, were so inclined, you could draw a reference angle. Uh, we draw that angle into the second quadrant, which means that we have a 30 degree reference angle. We use that, that reference triangle, and we evaluate the sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent appropriately. Anyway, so those would be our solutions for that one. So now we're going to move on to uh, another group of identities. Now, in this case, we're going to address a question that pops up a number of times in, in this section. This is about getting exact values of, of trig functions at specific angles. So, for example, one thing that we've done quite a bit is if I were to ask you to find what is the exact value of, let's say, the sine of 120 degrees. Now that would be the same as me asking you what's the the sine of in radians it would be 2 pi over 3. Now with exact we're talking about don't go to your calculators you just go ahead and you use you want to leave radicals you want to leave irrational numbers in there to get that exact value. So again you could use unit circle you could draw a reference triangle but an in either case, we uh, find out that the value of the sine of 120 degrees is going to be positive square root of 3 over 2. And you wouldn't get that from your calculator. You'd get a, a decimal approximation. But that's why we've talked about using the unit circle. and We've talked about these reference triangles to get these exact values um, rather easily. But we run into an issue if perhaps we were to ask, well, how about, uh, what if we were asked to find the sine of, Sticking with the degrees, let's go with 105 degrees. Well, now that's not an angle that we that we run into very often, um, or at least at this point in the class. So that angle is not on the unit circle. We can't draw a reference triangle that uses that angle. So we're going to have two possibilities here. Now, one possibility could be that, well, if you're not asked to find an exact value, we could just use our calculator. So sometimes you'll be asked to round. So if you're asked to round your answer, then that's a signal to use your calculator. So just use your calculator. Not very fun, but you can use your calculator. Uh, in this case, we want to make sure that we are in, we are in degree mode. Now the other option, and this is probably the one you're going to run into most often in this course, especially with the homework, is you may be asked for an exact value. Now, if this is the case, we're going to have to use identities. So that's what we're going to discuss in, in this video. So what I'd like you to consider in this case is, yeah, we don't know what to do with 105 necessarily, but if we were to consider that 105 degrees now, I know this is a, a jump at this point, but if we looked at it, we could say, well, you know what, that's 60 degrees plus 45 degrees, coincidentally enough. And 60 and 45 are pretty attractive angles so far in, in our class because we can, we can use those angles as reference triangles or using the unit circle. So if that seems a little bit more attractive, we might be tempted to consider, well, maybe finding the sine of 105 degrees could be easier thought through as finding the sine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. 
Now, we can't just break this up because it's not how, how trig functions work, but we can use what are called the sum and difference identities to help us to help us work through this. So now brace yourself because these are a little messy, but uh, you might want to pause the video to write these down as we go through. But these are the sum and difference identities. I know, they're atrocious. But they allow us to take the cosine, sine, and tangent. And if we could break the angle that we're evaluating this, this function at, our, our argument, as a sum or as a difference of two angles that we're more comfortable working with, we can break them up accordingly. So what I'd like to do first is I'd like to use this identity to address the question of the sine of, of 105 degrees. So let's go ahead and, and try that one. So as our example here, Put that right here. So as an example, let's say we wanted to find the sine of 105 degrees. And we've already done a little bit of the legwork here. And we've said, well, this would be the same as the sine of 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. Uh, there's a number of ways we could have broken that 105 degrees down into two separate angles. We could have looked at it as the difference of two. But here, this, this seemed to me at first to be the most obvious. So let's use the sum and difference identities to solve this. So we're going to use this one right here, the sum of two angles alpha and beta for, for sine. So with respect to this identity, we're going to be thinking of this 60 degrees as sort of our alpha angle and as this 45 degrees as the beta angle and work through the, work through the problem um, with that in mind. So let's start breaking this up. So if 60 degrees is alpha, we can write this as the sine of our alpha, which is 60 degrees, times the cosine of our beta, which is 45 degrees, plus the cosine of our alpha, which is 60 degrees, times the sine of our beta, which is 45 degrees. So we've broken this up just like the that third identity on that list tells us to. Now, these are all values we can get exact solutions for. We should have these memorized however we want to do it with reference angles or with the unit circles. However way we do it, we're going to be able to take the next step by saying, well, the sine, the exact value of the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 divided by 2. The exact value of the co cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 divided by 2. The exact value of the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. And the exact value for the sine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. And since these are both our alpha and beta are angles in the first quadrant, they're all positive. Uh, if they weren't, we'd want to make accommodations for positive and negative. So now we just have to multiply this all out and add it together. So if we multiply our first two terms together, we're going to get the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, which is going to give us the square root of 6, divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. And to that, we will add 1 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 2, all over 2 times 2, which is 4. And if we add those together, we've got a common denominator already, so this makes it very easy. It's just going to be the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2, which we can't simplify, all divided by, by 4. And this would be, it is not pretty at all, but that would be our exact solution. So this is exact, and that would be our answer. And if you were to type this into your calculator and approximate it, it would give you an approximation. It would be the exact same approximation if you took the sine of 105 degrees and typed that into your calculator. So this is sort of the way we go about using the sum and difference identities to help us find exact answers of, of otherwise tricky angles. So let's, uh, let's try a, another one. Uh, so for a second example, let's try one in radians just to kind of see how this would work. Let's say you're asked to find the cosine of pi over 12. All right, so we want to find the exact value. Well, we look at this and we'd see, well, pi over 12 is definitely not an angle we're used to seeing as a reference angle around the unit circle. Uh, so maybe we could use the summer difference identities. Now, to be perfectly honest, I might not see this right away uh, in terms of 
intuitively vi visualizing the, a summer difference of two angles here. So what I'm going to encourage you to do is to take that to take that angle if you get it in radians and go ahead and convert in degrees just for the for the time being. It's going to be a little bit easier to see. So if we take our pi divided by 12 and if we were to convert this so we'll take that and we'll convert that into degrees what you would end up getting is you'd get 15 degrees now this might be a little bit easier to work with so 15 degrees could be thought of as well maybe 15 degrees 45 degrees minus 30 both of those are angles that we can work with rather comfortably so we'll go ahead and we'll use these now another way we could have thought of it and I'm just going to put this in parentheses because it's not that important. Another way we could have broken this up is if we had stuck to radians, it would have ended up being pi over 4 minus pi over 6. But again, that's not very easy to see from, from the start. So moving to degrees is probably going to be your best bet here. So now we can go ahead and we can rewrite our, our original problem here as rather than the cosine of pi over 12, let's think of this as evaluating the cosine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. And if we use our difference of two angles, which is going to be this second one right here, this is going to be the, and again, our 45 is our alpha here. So that's our alpha, our 30, this is our beta. And we'll go ahead and we'll we'll separate this up using the identity. So this is going to be the cosine of alpha, 45 degrees, times the cosine of beta, which is 30 degrees, plus the sine of alpha, which is 45 degrees, times the sine of beta, which is 30 degrees. Now we go ahead and we we get answers for these. So I'm just going to scroll up here. So this is going to be equal to cosine of 45, we know is the square root of 2 divided by 2. Cosine of 30 degrees, we know is the square root of 3 divided by 2. And that's going to be plus sine of 45, the square root of 2 divided by 2. And the sine of 30 is 1 divided by divided by 2. We go ahead and we multiply this out and this is going to be a very familiar answer in this case. So we're going to end up with the square root of 6 divided by 4 plus the square root of 2 divided by 4 which we could then put together as the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 divided by 4. Now, I would not be at all surprised if WebAssign wants you to write this answer uh, in the following way. So just kind of be prepared um, to write this as one-fourth times the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2. It seems kind of ridiculous, but, but they may want you to write that in that. Enter your solutions for these homework problems like that. So that would be how we, we use the sum and difference identities to help, us, to help us get exact values. So something to consider. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and give this, give this one a shot. So try this one. So try this one. So go ahead and find the exact value for uh, how about we find the sign of... 13 pi divided by 12. So why don't we go ahead and try this one. Again, you might want to consider converting this in degrees first and seeing how you break it up. But go ahead, give that one a try, and we'll take a look at the solution in the next video.